Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4, playing some World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to be looking at a replay, we're going to be on Atlantic, and we are going to be Zarkoon. Uh, Zarkoon, if you're not familiar with him, he has a YouTube channel, works pretty hard on it, pretty high production quality. I've left a link down in the description. Zarkoon's going to be helping us out today in the Tashkent. Tashkent, of course, is the Tier 7 Russian Tech Tree Destroyer. Really more of a light cruiser, but it's classed as a destroyer anyway. A lot of people have kind of been struggling with uh, the Russian line. I like to think of them as suicide boats. Uh, not particularly because I go out there and get myself killed as quickly as possible, but because that seems to be a lot of what everyone else is doing. So today we're going to see... Zarkoon hopefully showing us how it's done without necessarily resulting in self-harm. So what we've got here in Atlantic, he's moving out towards the center. You can see just the massive, massive detection that this has. And while he's moving into this position, I will go ahead and put his commander up on the screen. I will note, because I did ask him about sending me his commander, a little uh, reticent about sending it to me. He said, essentially, he's just trying this out. This is not something he would recommend, so uh, we will put all of the required disclaimers down at the bottom of the screen. In any case, that's what he's running with in this particular game, so we'll just see how it works for him. Now, the opening salvos here, you can see the Tashkent enjoys significantly better torpedo range than the rest of the destroyers in the Russian branch. So, in spite of everything else having four kilometers, uh, here we are shooting comfortably out to eight. And he lands a couple of hits on the front of that Vanguard, starts the game out nice with both a cap and also some flooding damage on that capital ship. He floods out and there's kill number one. So this is a pretty great way to start a match. And obviously you can see in spite of his huge detection, he's not really pushing in so that people can see him. Now one thing that you do have to be really careful about right now is those airplanes. Um, obviously, there's a bug going around right now that basically means um, that if your anti-aircraft are shooting at those airplanes, then they're going to detect you. Ah, uh, it's really made playing a destroyer not very fun at all. In any case, still biding his time, you see, with some careful positioning, he is actually able to stealth launch these torpedoes and those are, at, um, those are at targets that are kind of moving at least a little bit towards him, uh, basically helping to move into the range. Uh, if it was moving straight perpendicular, it would sell outside of the circle eventually. And now that he's in a nice central position, he pops that smoke, and now you can see what the Tashkent is really good at. He's got other people spotting for him, and though I think he was actually aiming for that Dunkirk, it does look like he managed to land just a ton of damage on that Richelieu. And I imagine he's probably not going to be in the game for very much longer. Zarkoon is doing a good job not being greedy here. Essentially, he knows that that Richelieu is hosed. And he's basically just racking up the damage in terms of getting hits on everything else. Now, that... Richelieu does end up flooding to death, and he does get the devastating strike because it was the flooding that was caused in the first 10 seconds of damage that ended up finishing him off, even though it took a little bit longer. Now you see what Zarkoon's doing here is he's spreading those shots from bow to stern, trying to make sure that he hits different parts of the ship, parts of the ship that aren't on fire already. And now that he's got three fires going on that 
particular battleship, not necessarily him, but that there are three. He switched over to the AP. Uh, he's aiming upper belt, which is right about where he should be. And these shells are big enough that they actually can cause penetration damage. And here we are, just barely five minutes into the game. And you see he's already passed into the high caliber with two kills. And though he has been spotted, it was only once and only very briefly. Things are getting a little hot here, so Zarkoon's right to think about leaving this area. Dumping some torpedoes on that Colorado. Unfortunately, it does look like Colorado sails into detection range at that point. So really there shouldn't be any good chance that these torpedoes hit, but uh, World of Warships, you never know what the other guy's doing. And now I can't see the guy, but you can see there's a little bit of curiosity to see is he actually going to sail into the torpedoes. As it turns out, just a little bit, uh, could have definitely been a lot worse for the Colorado. Probably should have been a little bit more aggressive with his maneuvering and changing of, of his speed. Unfortunately, the Colorado is not able to do much in terms of returning fire. So, essentially, you're looking at Zarkoon with just about 140,000 damage with almost nothing returned to him. I mean, he's down, what, 2,500 damage? Not even. That's, that's nothing. Now he's going to poke a little bit here. He throws some more HE out there. At this point, that HE is to try to get a fire started again. Obviously, that Colorado should have put out the flooding, so there's not a lot of chance that he has his damage control intact. Now, this got real close, though. Real close. And obviously, Zarkoon is lucking out here in terms of there's only one destroyer on the enemy team, and he's not going to get challenged too much. He's not going to get outspotted too much. And he's making the most of this favorable spotting situation by essentially just running riot all over the enemy team. Now you saw that well-placed torpedo spread. He sent one right where the indicator said, and he probably thought, and I would have guessed the same way, that the ship was going to slow down and then it was going to probably try to round the corner. So he put the other two short, which basically meant that the Colorado, unless it managed to somehow get between them, wasn't going to get through. Now sitting at 170,000 damage, pretty much all of Zarkoon's team is uh, either kind of floating around in the back or over by sea. Not contributing too terribly much, at least at this point. Always a little bit frustrating to be in these situations where it doesn't seem like everybody on your team is on the same page in terms of the points. It's even more annoying to, to lose a game on points like that, but Zarkoon's doing a good job here. You can see, even if he is frustrated, he's turning back in because shouldn't really be all that upset with other people if you're not willing to do it yourself. And here he goes. I mean, he got B once by himself, he can do it again. So, in he goes again. You see, he's going to be up against a Kagero. Now, he is a lot better off fighting a Kagero if he knows where the Kagero is, because I have tried to shoot down this Tashkent with a Fletcher with a full rate of fire build, and it was... It was ugly. So if nothing else, the Tashkent seems like something that's kind of fun to bomb around in, uh, and maybe worth the effort to try to get through all of the somewhat less than stellar destroyers that come before it. Now if you think about it, 
The amount of mileage that Zarkuna is covering in this particular game is actually pretty short. This is a very well played and very subtle game that he's playing, which is just dancing around these islands, using smoke when he's got it, and putting damage over time on just about everything he possibly can. Now if he's real lucky, he should be able to get some shots on that Kagero. The targeting selection here is a little questionable because anytime you have an enemy destroyer in sight, I kind of feel like what you want to do is make sure that you take care of it. And obviously that Kagero is also just begging for attention by shooting at the Tashkent. With some fire and that rear turret knocked out, you see obviously he pops that repair, puts a couple extra shots into the Kagero, but he's finished off by a teammate. And that actually takes a lot of pressure off of him because at this point there's nothing that's really all that dangerous to him. I say that exactly when the Megami hits him for a whole bunch of damage. But really the Megami, it's not going to want to get into the ranges where the Tashkent is really competitive with it. So in a sense there's not too much that he should need to worry about from that particular cruiser. Now that the Japanese cruiser is slipped behind those islands. You can see he's moving over to the target he can actually see. Uh, this is probably a good idea even though the Baltimore is at very long range for the Tashkent uh, just because it's a lot easier to shoot at things when you can actually see it and as good as we all are or we all try to be shooting over mountains it's still better to be able to know exactly where to lead your shots. Unfortunately, that Baltimore slips away outside of the Tashkent's relatively meager range. I think that's why Zarkun was saying that this might not be the best setup for this particular ship. A lot of people prefer Anton Gurin because he is going to give you access to a little bit more range. And that extra range is going to help quite a bit in a ship like the Tashkent. Now this isn't real good news for Zarkoon. Obviously you can see he's getting pretty close to this Megami and the Megami also has poked out just about at the worst possible time. Huge hit from the Megami. I think it was actually shooting AP as well. So we're looking at some full detonations inside Unfortunately, Suicide Boat just can't help itself in the end. Now, in spite of the fact that Zarkoon is down for the count, his team do go on to finish out the game with a win. I'm not going to show that all to you because it's all from Zarkoon's point of view and it's just a boat. Slowly, slowly sinking. Anyway, real solid performance here by Zarkoon. Maybe we don't agree with exactly how he set up his boat, but neither does he, uh, comes away with 200,000 damage and no surprise that he would end up on the top of the charts. Once again, Zarkoon, good player. He's got a YouTube channel. I've left a link down in the description. He did not give me the economics of his particular game, so uh, personally, I have a beef to pick with him. But if you have some time, go on over to his channel, take a look, very good stuff. Thank you everybody for watching this little video. I'll see you on the next one.